Greetings to you all in the powerful name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ and good to see you all again uh, for another session. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the series is progressing. This is our uh, 23rd lesson from the chapter 11 of Hebrews. So till last week, we have been um, looking at the different people's life. And uh, last week, we um, learned a lot of lessons from the life of Rahab. How God used a common woman and how she became part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. How her destiny was changed by a single act of obedience, um, but very profound. Praise the Lord. And that is what God is expecting from us. And if you go through each of these people's life, repeatedly, repeatedly, we can see one simple truth. Obedience matters. Obedience matters. That's all matters. And uh, today also we are going to see the life of Gideon. So till last week, we have seen the life of people starting from Abel and Joshua and Rehab. Now, after that, after Joshua's departure, Israel has gone through a time of wilderness, wandering. Wandering in the sense means from a spiritual perspective. And when it comes to the book of Judges, and that is the context of next few weeks, Israel was repeatedly sinning and God was enabling a judge. Then again, they will do sin and then God will enable another judge. So it was going cyclically that every time this cycle was repeating in Israel's life. Remember, starting from the wilderness, starting from Egypt, they murmured 10 times. God had to punish them. Repeatedly give them warning. But after seeing the profound leadership of Moses, Joshua, these people are not changing. Now it's the era of judges. We can see one judge after another judge, one after another. God is enabling to deliver Israel from the enemy nations. Now, Coming to the book of he Hebrew, chapter number 11, after describing a lot of people's life, now the author is coming to a point where he's trying to say that, now I have gone through a list of people, right? Starting from Abel till Rahab. Now, let me take a different approach. Now, I don't have time to explain about the people whom I'm going to refer now. And he's listing so many people's names like uh, Gideon, Barak, uh, David. So we are going to see their lives in the coming weeks. As I told in the beginning, we are only confining ourselves to the names of people in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. And that is the reason why we are following the order. Now the Hebrews author is saying that I don't have time to talk about Gideon. That means we have a lot of people are there in this list and that list goes on and on and on. And that is the reason why in the beginning I told if Hebrews were to write now, our names also should have been there. If it would have not been there, that means our act of faith, our act of obedience is not according to the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as we go through the series, every week, let's do an introspection and ask God, Lord, am I obeying your word? Am I trusting you enough so that you can use me at any point of time, God? And that is the story of Gideon as well. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, the author is saying, and what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon and so many other people. Now, what does that mean? He's telling that, don't think that the list of the people whom I've quoted, that's only people who are included in the cloud of witnesses. It is millions of people are there. Millions of people are there. Hallelujah. And that is the beauty of Christian life. 
So when we go through some tough situation, when we go through some difficult situation, never think that we are alone. Remember, there was a cloud of witnesses who have already passed through this and they are passing through right now as we speak. And there are a lot of people are yet to come to join this cloud. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why the climax will be there in heaven. And when we look back, we'll be able to see a big crowd in heaven. Hallelujah. And that is the hope of a Christian. Now, when it comes, when it comes to Gideon, as I told, the before, before this judge, they had around 40 years of peace. 40 years of peace. Then after 40 years, Judges chapter 6 starts like this. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. That is the way it starts. And this term we can see repeatedly in the book of Judges. Again, evil was done by Israel. Again, Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So when one generation is moving, when the next generation comes, when they don't know who is our father, this happens. That's very important for us to pass on the faith to the next generation. That's the reason why God told you how to establish the stones from Jordan. You have to talk to your kids always. You have to talk to your next generation. When you walk, when you drive, when you, when you, when you uh, sleep, every time, 24 by 7, you need to instruct them to walk in the path of God. And if one generation miss it, this is what's going to happen. Again, Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And in the midst of that, there is an appointment happening. And that is the reason why I just coined today's discussion as empowering the weakest. Empowering the weakest. Hallelujah. Let me, let me encourage you all. If you think that you are weak, if you think that you are not eligible, today's message is for you. God is a God of empowerment. Hallelujah. Can you trust him? When we go through the life of Gideon today and next week, we'll be able to understand how marvelously God has enabled this servant of God. Like Moses, like Abel, like Enoch, like Noah. God is repeating history. And remember, I told one thing. In the midst of this wicked generation, God is finding a remnant. Hallelujah. Every generation, God is finding one or other people to preserve that remnant. Hallelujah. That's what happened in the life of, in the, in the, in the days of Noah. We have seen that. Enoch, Abraham, Joseph, Jacob, Isaac, Joshua, Moses. Every time God was trying to preserve a Remnant, and that's what's going to happen here also. Now, when we, we if we are going to look at the life of Gideon, I just wanted to structure today's study with the three important questions, so that when we answer that three questions, we'll be able to understand how God empowered the weakest Gideon for delivering Israel. Now, let's move on. The first question. I want to ask, is this the right time to empower a person like this? Why did I say that? And uh, we, the, the, the today's discussion will be from the chapter number six of Judges. So please open Judges chapter number six in front of you so that you'll be able to understand the context. I will be quoting a lot of verses from that chapter. So please keep your Bibles open, Judges chapter six. And Judges chapter six, Verses 1 to 6 is explaining the present condition of Israel. And that is the reason why I ask this question. Is it the right time to empower a weak person? They ruined the crops of Israel. Completely ruined. They completely destroyed Israel. And once, when they start attacking them, Israel's have to go to mountains and hide. And all this reason, all these things are happening because Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And once 
when they were attacking, it is written that it was impossible to count the army. Oh, look at the condition here. A moral degradation, spiritual degradation. Mentally, they are exhausted. And thus, in this time, God is enabling a person. Hallelujah. So look at the look at the timing here, right? The 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 context when we see the context, as I told, after forty years, seven years of oppression by Midianites, seven years of severe oppression. Every time when they do the harvest, what they will do? We have seen that in the video, right? They will come and take it away. So this was happening on a regular basis. And if that happens for a nation, you can imagine the frustration. You can imagine the situation of that country. And that's what Israel is going through right now. Totally, they are down. Totally, they are going through tough time because of their sins. Hallelujah. And this is not the first time we are seeing that. When we learned about Noah, we have seen that the days of Noah were evil. People did whatever they liked. And the same thing here in Judges also is written. People pleased to do whatever they want. They didn't have any law. They didn't follow anything. A typical postmodern culture. They didn't want any ownership. They were their own masters. They don't know what is right. There is no, there is nothing wrong. They did everything what they liked. The definition of right and wrong was defined by themselves. Just imagine a society like that. There is no absolute morality. There is no absolute truth. There is no absolute principle. Everything was based on relativism. I will do whatever I want. You don't care. That was their attitude. Hallelujah. And that is the same thing Jesus is saying. In the end days, there will be days like this. Second Timothy chapter 3, Paul is talking about the end days. So it is repeated, it is repeated. It is not the first time we are seeing this kind of situation. History is being repeated. But at this point of time, is it the right time for you and me to be enabled by God? Is, the, is that the question we need to ask? Yes. Yes. It's the right time. And that is what we are seeing the complete in, in the complete history of Israel's and all the all the people whom we have learned so far. Look at the time of Enoch, right? Everybody were living the way they want. They lived, they had children and died. That was the pattern. But one day Enoch decided to walk with God. Same thing Noah. Everybody were doing evil, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Abraham decided to walk differently. Daniel decided to walk differently. Joshua is saying that I don't know about you, but me and my family will serve the Lord. They all took some decision. They all took some courageous decision to follow Jesus Christ, to follow God. But they, the, the season was not conducive for them. The season was not an advantage for them. So we cannot blame the season. We cannot blame the, the days. Oh, Lord, it's very tough. No, this is the time. This is the time of empowerment. Hallelujah. I want all of you to tell yourself, Lord, empower me. Lord, empower me, Lord, in this season. I don't want to wait for a right time. Lord, this is the right time. Lord, this is the time. This is the day, Lord. I want you to be enabled by your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There is no right time. This is the right time. Hope you are able to understand. God is asking tonight, are you ready? Are you ready to be empowered? You may be saying that I'm the weakest. I'm coming to that point. But let me tell you, there is no perfect time. 
if god can enable empower gideon in a season like this if god can empower noah in a season like that if god can empower abraham if god can empower enoch god can empower us also that is a lesson this gideon is teaching us let me move on a very pathetic situation yes this is the right time for god the second question is gideon is the right person i understood that israel is going through a tough time and god need a leader but he is the right person he can only say that i am not ready he was least ready for this empowerment how do we know what he was doing he was trying to um he what he was doing he was threshing wheat in a wine press because he just wanted to keep that from midianites if midianites come and see that they will take it away so that's the reason why he was threshing wheat near the wine press thinking that they will not find him so his world was very small right that day he woke up lord i have small little bit of wheat he would have prayed lord lord don't let midianites to take this away let me try to do something with this or well, look at the look at the the myopic view of this guy when he woke up but that day changed his life the same thing several times we are confined to our problems right lord my family lord what about this we are not able to see what is happening around us because they were so oppressed by the enemy they are so subdued by the enemy their vision is only about them oh, look at gideon he was threshing wheat in a wine press like a subdued guy he was not ready for this he was not expecting a visitation from god he didn't even think that there was god existing we are coming to that point later he lost all the hope not only him everybody lost the hope such an hopeless situation from a from a individual perspective from a family perspective and from a country nation perspective but look at god god is saying you are the right person yes yes you are the right person you are the right person you may not be ready right now but you are the right person for god to enable you to empower you in a season like this that's what god is telling me here now not only that he was not ready he was very weak how do we know there just 613 when god told that oh warrior god is with you then gideon excuse me what did he say say he was surprised look at the body language pardon me my lord gideon replied if the lord is with us why has all this happened to us he said there is no god but look at what angel told agent didn't say that god is with you all god is god the angel was very specific that god is with you man with you with you hallelujah so that means this young guy was trying to keep the law of god he was having a little bit hope but by seeing the circumstances he thought nothing was going to happen the god of israel is dead all his hope has gone that's the reason why when god appeared to him an angel appeared to him is telling but if the lord is with us why all these things happening to us but angel told god is not with the nation god is only with you hallelujah look at the situation when things around us may not be suitable for us to live a holy life we may blame our friends we may blame the circumstances we may blame our job or situation and everything lord because of that i did this god is saying i am with you gideon i am with you with you 
spiritually, mentally, physically, he was weak. Mentally, he was exhausted. He was trying to thresh that wheat, a little bit of wheat near the wine press, and spiritually dry. People have not heard about God at all. And we are going to see that the worship, they have not seen God's worship for a long time. They forgot how to praise God. They forgot how to sing song. Hallelujah. Spiritual depravity. And in this season, God is saying, Gideon, I have seen you as part of the remnant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the enablement God is expecting for us. But are you ready? Are you ready? Are you, ready? You, may be, you may not be ready with respect to your situation. You may be the weakest. And then after that, when Gideon, Gideon is asking God, Lord, how can I do this? My clan is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. Oh, superlative degree least. He's telling that exponentially, right? I'm the weakest. In weakest clan in the tribe. And I'm the weakest in the family. I'm the least, 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 least. God, you, you would have mistaken. I don't think so. It's me, God. It's not me. I am the weakest. I am the, I'm the least eligible person for this empowerment. You find somebody else. That's the reason why Gideon, as we see in that video, Gideon has so many signs. Right? But God did that. In order to strengthen, in order to, in order to make Gideon convinced, God did so many miracles. Peace markers. He did that. Finally, Gideon was convinced. But look at the situation. Is the right time? The second question is the right person. That's why Paul is telling God has selected us, the foolish. So that he can shame the wise. Oh. God has selected the weakest. So that he can shame the strong. Look at us. Look at us. Why did God select us? It's because of our ability. No, 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 no. We were enemies. We were, we were, we were aliens. We were sinners. But God sent his own begotten son to die for us. Yet Christ died for us, Romans chapter 5. Even though we were enemies, even though we were aliens, even though we were um, sinners, Jesus died for us. What a great election that is. In a season like this, God has chosen us. But are we living up to that expectation. Are we embracing the call? Hallelujah. Or are we telling excuse that Lord, when I say salvation is also part of the election, but there is a specific empowerment happening here for a task. Is it the right time? Is he the right person? Let me come to the third question. Is it the right task? Ah. In a season like this, a person like this is being asked to do a big task. God didn't ask Gideon to do a small thing. Look at what God told Gideon. He didn't say that, Gideon, if you live uprightly as you are doing right now, you will save yourself. No, 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 no. You will save Israel out of Midian's hand. Six number, verse 614. You will save Israel out of Midian's hand. One man, one man 
Oh, look at the empowerment of God. One man who is the weakest, who is the least eligible person, God is empowering that weakest vessel to accomplish a great task. This is the equation of God. This is the equation of God. That's why Paul told, I am the number one sinner, but God selected me. God empowered me to do a greater task. Hallelujah. Weakest person being empowered for a powerful task. Humongous task. Are you able to comprehend this? God will not give you the task according to your ability. God will give you the task based on his empowerment. Your task is not equal to your ability. Your task is based on God's power, his empowerment. Gideon, you may be the weakest, you may be the least, but I am empowering you for a powerful task. Oh, to save a nation. It's very easy for us to read, right? Save Israel out of Midian's hand. Seven years they were oppressed, but I want you to save them. Not only that, you have to save, you have to strike down all the Midianites. You have to annihilate, annihilate them, completely destroy them. You cannot even spare anybody. Complete distraction. That's verse number 16. Strike down all the Midianites. I will be with you. Am I not sending you? Again, Gideon knows, how can I do this? How can I do this? God is saying, am I, not, am I not sending you? Save Israel, completely destroy Midianites. And very importantly, God is asking Gideon to restore spiritual worship. So many years. There was no altar. You know what? Gideon, God is telling Gideon. Verse 26. When I was reading that, I was able to see the heart of God. Then build a proper kind of altar. Proper kind of altar. Oh, God was longing for that worship. God was looking for one person who can restore the spiritual worship. The time of revival, God is enabling Gideon to do that. What do you have to do? You have to completely distract the altar for the other gods. And your family also has gone away from me. The family altar has to be completely destroyed and you have to build a proper kind of altar, proper kind of altar. Your forefathers used to worship me. Then only I can fulfill the promise without altar, oh, without worship, without spiritual restoration. I cannot do anything. Praise the Lord. I want the spiritual worship to be restored in this country, in this nation. Let the people come back to me. The word proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on top of this height. Hallelujah. The first commandment. The first commandment. God is bringing back, bringing them back to the basics. You shall not have any other God other than me. You have to completely destroy altar for other gods and you have to build a proper kind of altar for the Lord your God. Oh, what a commission. What a commission and empowerment. 
to save the nation, to completely destroy the enemy by building a proper, proper, proper. Oh, very important for us to understand that. Not the way you want. Proper. The way I have described. The way I have prescribed. You need to do that. When you do that, the spiritual restoration will happen. And then I am ready to come with you for the battle. Hallelujah. The same thing happened. We have seen that before they were conquering Cherigo, God asked to bring them, bring them back to the covenant. Right? God asked Joshua to circumcise everybody. Without covenant being restored, I cannot do anything. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, spiritual restoration is very important. That is very important. Before God is empowering us, are we able to restore our spiritual state? The relationship, any strain happen in the relationship. Are we able to do a proper kind of worship? Oh, I really like that word. Proper kind of worship. Can we come back to the basics of worship? Only one God, only one God, no other God. Again, I am empowering even though you are the weakest. Hallelujah. Is, there, is it the right time? Yes. Am I the right person? Yes. God is the right task? Yes. Get ready, get ready. This is the season of empowering the weakest. So that means none of us will be disqualified because if you are the weakest, you are the number one to be selected. Oh, what an equation of God. I just wanted to bring three spiritual lessons which are very practical and then we'll conclude here. Very simple, but at the same time very profound. Number one, Gideon is teaching us our availability matters, not our ability. Are you available? We, we sing a song, when he calls me, right? I will answer. When you call me, I will answer. I may not be ready. I may not be the strongest person. But I will answer. That should be your commitment. Lord, I am available. You can call me anytime like a reserved army. Anytime the war comes, the call can come. Lord, I am available. Not the ability. God asked Gideon, I'm not worried about your strength. Go with your strength. The strength what you have right now is enhanced by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And God's timing matters, not our convenience. Lord, can we? Can I do that after a few years? No, 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 no. Today, that day, that day, that's what it is written. That day, God again spoke to Gideon. Gideon, God is after you. Until unless you are fully empowered and Midianites are completely destroyed, God will not rest. It's His timing matters, not our convenience. And again, continue to depend on God's strength, not our skills. We are going to see that. What was the strategy by which God made Him to win the war? We have seen the gist of that in that video. God is teaching Gideon dependency on God's strength. That's why Psalms 84, 5 says, Blessed are those who find strength in him. Blessed are those whose strength is in God. It is not that blessed are the people who have strength. No, they are not blessed. Blessedness lies in the fact that my strength is in God. I am the weakest, but God is powerful. I am the least, but he is able. I am a foolish man, but God's wisdom will empower me. 
I don't have any strength. But the Holy Spirit will strengthen me. Is the right time God? Yes. Am I the right person God? Yes. Do I have to do all those things God? Yes. This is the season of empowering the weakest. May God bless you with these words. Let us be in an attitude of surrender and say, The Lord, here am I. I am available. God, please use me. I am the weakest. And because of that, I am the most qualified to be empowered. May God bless you. Amen.